Hello and welcome to the second tutorial in the HTML forms course. So last tutorial we looked at how to create a very simple form which is this one uh, with the label and input which is the uh, first name and the uh, button here. Now we also talked about the method and the action and the name of the form. Today we're going to look at some other uh, inputs. Today we're going to look at some other things that the form can have. So this form actually created uh, this uh, page here, the first name page. So obviously a form has more than one input. In fact, this has got two because of the, the button and so forth. So let's start creating and building this form up. So what I would like to do is create another input. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put this here with um, the last name. I'm going to put that back in. Last name. Placeholder is last name. Um, I'm also going to put in whoops, the last name label 2. So I'm going to copy that. Put that in here. Just call this last name. And I'm going to just put in uh, enter last name and enter first name in here. Save that. I'm also going to put in a a line break. So, whoops, sorry, a, a BR, right? Save that, refresh the page. Now, what this is going to do is put it on the next line. So, first name and then last name. If I didn't put the line break in, then the last name would go at the top here. So, let's demonstrate that. If I remove this, the BR, then it would wrap on here. So, we don't actually want to do that. And now we could get around this by putting it in paragraph tags, but that's really hacky. It's not a paragraph. It's not a paragraph of text. So we can do a BR. Now, um, this isn't really ideal. What we what you would do is lay it out using CSS. So this would be very. Uh, this form would be um, just put on the page as it is, and then CSS. You might wrap this around some in some divs, which we'll get onto in future videos and then create some classes to decide how to actually lay this form out. But for now, we're only going to use BRs just because it's um, easy to do. I mean, what we could do is even put in some HRs, which are horizontal rules. Let's save that, go into here, which is a horizontal rule. Um, so perhaps we'll do that from now on. So I'm going to put in a HR between here and the uh, the button save that and refresh the page. We could also do this within a table, but again, a table isn't very semantically good for forms. Essentially, a form should just be a form. And then you would use something like CSS to style the form. We'll get on to all of that later on. Let's just continue now to actually create uh, the other elements of this form. So we have first name, last name. Um, I also want to add in some, uh, some checkboxes. And the way we do that is have an input with a type of check, whoops, checkbox. And if I was just to have it like so and refresh the page, then we just have a small little checkbox here. But there isn't a name or there isn't anything that is uh, assigned to this. So when this form gets submitted, we won't be able to distinguish what the check, which value is associated to the checkbox. So what we can do, let's just put that up here just to make uh, a little bit more sense uh, with HR. Um, I'm also going to put in a label like so. And I'm going to do um, subscribe to newsletter. Newsletter. Whoops. If I spell that right with the, without that, save that. Um, and it's going to be four. And again, we need to have an ID, which is um, sub subscribe. So this label is for subscribe. I'm going to give it a name, which is subscribe to subscribe. Save that, refresh this, and there we go. Subscribe to newsletter, and we have a checkbox. But what if we want to have that checkbox to be default? defaulted to be checked, so defaulted to be ticked. Well, we would do something like this. We would do checked. 
like so. Now, this doesn't actually need to have a value. It just needs to be called checked like so. And if we were to refresh this page, it's checked. Semantically speaking, we would have checked is equal to checked, right? Save that and refresh this. So there we go. But it doesn't actually have a value, so we can't actually do unchecked and refresh. Okay, it basically this means that if there if the checked attribute exists, then it is checked. If it doesn't exist, then it's not checked. So this doesn't make any sense. So we can just do checked like so. It's a little bit of a nuance with checkboxes. Um, it does it's an attribute that doesn't actually need to have a value. So let's save that, refresh this, and we have checked. So subscribe to newsletter, first name and last name. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually have a series of radio buttons. So this is the difference, I suppose, from a checkbox. A checkbox has only got one value. It's either on or it's off. It's either ticked or, ticked or it's unticked. Whereas a radio button, you have a series of radio buttons and you can only select one of the options in that. So you can only have one radio button on at one time if it's in the radio button group. Let's go and uh, do that now. Let's go back to the code. So in here, I'm just going to bring in another HR just to uh, space it out a little bit. So in between that, I'm going to have a label. So in this label, I'm going to have a series of options. So this label is going to be about the eye color. So I'm just going to put eye color. And what we're going to do, let me just put in eye color here, is, whoops, is have a series of radio buttons, so eye color. Um, which define an eye color so that when the user comes to this form they can select which eye color they have okay so what we need to do again is an input um, and then type is equal to uh, radio right and also we're gonna have a name and we're gonna set that to be um, eye color and we're gonna have a ID again of eye color and we're gonna close that off so we're gonna have a value in this so value here is equal to uh, blue so eye color of blue let's save that refresh the page we can see that we have eye color and then that here so that's the radio. Now notice that once it's on, it cannot be changed. Now that is because we need to have another radio of the same name with a different uh, ID. So in fact, I'm going to do eye color, um, eye color blue, and then eye color green. So the value here is going to be green but the name is going to be the same, right? So let's change that to be blue and change that to be uh, blue like so. And we're going to have another label after this one, which is green. And eye color is green. Save that, refresh the page. And now we have two options. So we have eye color blue and eye color green. Right. So if I tick that and then tick that, well, notice that because the name of the, this input is the same, that I can only select one or the other. Whereas with a with with a checkbox, it is either on or off. Right. So you could I suppose you could say that this is on or off. But the th the point of this is that you can have multiple radio buttons. So, for example, I could do um, let's copy that uh, like that. Let's do another one and call this brown. Whoops, sorry, and then have that as brown. And the value here is brown. And save that, refresh this, and now we have brown. So that's eye color of blue, eye color of green, and eye color of brown. Now this isn't displayed very well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a BR, whoops, um, here, and a BR here, and that should space it out slightly. There we go. So eye color blue, in fact, this is um, 
Uh, duh, 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 duh. Um, so in fact, as you can see, that it's actually wrapped around here. So what I need to do is remove that BR from that one and do it underneath this one. So that is, so this becomes the group. Yeah, so the, we have the label and then the, the radio, then we have the label and then close, take that out and put it under here, the radio. Now, in, if this was, um, if this had some CSS to it, you would perhaps wrap this within a div. So this would be a, a div here, that would be a div there and so forth. We haven't gone on to divs yet. I'm gonna look at those later on in, in, in a later course perhaps. Let's just save this and see what's happened. So refresh here, and then we've got eye color. So that's a little bit better formatted. Let's just change that to be uppercase. And refresh that. Oops. Um, and what we can do is remove the word eye color. See, it's duplicated all sorts like that. So what we can do is just do blue. We can do green like that and brown. And what I'm going to do, so this is just some, some sort of semantic sugar. Just do H2 and do uh, please choose um, eye color, save, and then refresh. There we go, please choose an eye color, blue, green, or brown. And you can only select one of those options. Now, if I was to go to the checkbox here, and let's do another input like this, and do, um, subscribe to um, other <laughs> newsletter and just do other subscribe other or something as the as the ID subscribe other and let's remove the options for the checked on here so it's not going to um, uh, to and other here. So I've removed the, the checked off of here, which means that it's it's uh, not going to have a default. Let's save that, refresh this. Um, and if I was to tick that and then tick that, so both of those are ticked. So that is the difference between a radio and a checkbox. A, a radio, you can only have one selection within the name, right? So all of these are named the same. But with a checkbox, you can have multiple. And if I was to go back to the code, what I've done is I've changed the name from subscribe other to subscribe. And you can see that with the name here, eye color, eye color, eye color, that is because you can group the radios together. You can say that that radio um, is also grouped with that radio by its name. Um, you can't do that with checkboxes because checkboxes are actually individual. If I was to do that, for example, um, so they're both set to name, go back to the code, refresh the page, tick on that, it's still not ticking here. But later on in the course, when I demonstrate how to actually get the values of these things back, you want to ensure that the names for these checkboxes are unique. Whereas with the radios, what you do is you get back an array of values, all of which are uh, false apart from the one that's set to true. Let's go back to here. Let's change that back to other and save that. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, but uh, there's some more that I want to uh, look into with checkboxes and radio buttons, and there's other inputs like select boxes that I will venture into in the next tutorial. But if you found this video helpful, then do give it a thumbs up. Do share it around to others that might find it helpful too. Also, do subscribe if you haven't done so already. I do a tutorial like this every week, as well as a web chat every Friday. But uh, for now, thanks again for watching, and I shall see you again in the next tutorial. Cheers.